This week on Hometown Ghost Stories. The historic St. James Hotel in Cimarron, New Mexico was established in 1872. It was host to some of the most infamous names of the Old West. Bat Masterson, Annie Oakley, Buffalo Bill, Jesse James, and Wyatt Earp are just some of the guests who passed through the hotel. With a staggering 26 murders within the walls of the hotel, the building has since earned the reputation as being one of the most haunted hotels in New Mexico. Join us as we dive into the violent and bloody history of the St. James Hotel, Cimarron, New Mexico. Hometown Ghost Stories contains serious and often distressing events and is not intended for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. In the late 1980s, I took a job installing payphones all over the state of New Mexico. When I was given the task of installing several phones in the Cimarron area, I decided to spend the night at the St. James Hotel. That first night, I stayed in the Zane Gray room, and as I was getting ready to take a shower, I noticed a small mirror hanging on the wall that was rocking back and forth. Click, 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 click. Though I tried to ignore it, the clicking sound persisted until I finally walked over to the mirror and felt the wall to see if it was vibrating. It wasn't. I then looked into the mirror to see if I might see the reflection of something other than myself. Nope, nothing but me. Then I touched the mirror on the lower corner holding it to the wall before slowly taking my finger off. The rocking stopped. Before going to the shower, I looked at the mirror and said out loud with a smile on my face, What's the matter? You tired of playing? The mirror went click, click, and then stopped. Over the next few months, I had several more opportunities to stay at the St. James. In fact, I would plan my trips so that the Cimarron area would be my last stop and always stayed in the Zane Gray room. However, nothing more happened until what turned out to be my last stay there. Just down the hall from my room is another small circular room with a poker table. I always thought it would be great fun to play poker there, but never had the chance. On that night, I had gone to bed early, having to be in Colorado the next morning. However, I was having trouble falling asleep. And as I tossed and turned, I began to hear the sounds of people talking down the hall. It was odd, as I was the only guest at the hotel that night. As I listened to the voices, it sounded as if they were calling poker games such as Joker's Wild or Jacks Are Better to Open. Curious, I got up, pulled on my pants, opened the door, and looked down the hall. There in the corridor was a lady in a bright red ruffled 19th century period dress. Looking a little annoyed, she was holding a round serving tray. I went back into my room, thinking this might be my chance to play a little cards in the circular room I had always wondered about. I put on a shirt went back out and walked down the hallway to the poker room. When I poked my head in, three men, all in period dress, were playing poker. One of them asked me if I wanted to get in, to which I responded, what are the stakes? $20 ante, he replied. Unfortunately, all I had with me was my $20 bill and a company credit card. Having to decline, I went back to my room and went to sleep. When I got up around 5.30 a.m., I got my stuff together and as I walked down the hall, I looked into the poker room. It was spotless. No empty bottles, no cigarette butts, not even a dirty glass. I then went downstairs to the front desk to check out and asked the desk clerk, were there any big winners last night? What do you mean? She replied. Those guys playing poker upstairs last night, I said. Shaking her head, she said, Mr. Jenkins, I've been here all night. You were the only one upstairs. I'm Jesse Wilkins, and this is Hometown Ghost Stories. The St. James Hotel, Cimarron, New Mexico. In 1842, 
a fur trapper named Lucian B. Maxwell traveled to a ranch in northern New Mexico. He would end up marrying one of the six daughters of the ranch owner. Eventually, he would inherit the ranch and build a mansion on the future town site in 1858. Maxwell would go on to build the Aztec Mill in 1864, which now stands as a museum operated by the Cimarron Historical Society. The town was officially chartered in 1859. It started off as a stage stop on the mountain ranch of the Santa Fe Trail. With the Colfax County War starting, Maxwell decided to sell the land grant to a group of English investors for $1.75 million. The war ranged from 1873 to 1888 between settlers and the new owners of the Maxwell land grant in Colfax County. The war began when the new landowners tried to remove local settlers from the land that they had just purchased. The locals refused to leave and fought back. A large meeting between the settlers took place on March 30, 1873. On September 14, 1875, Reverend Franklin J. Tolby, a staunch ally of the settlers, was found murdered in Cimarron Canyon. It was quickly assumed that someone from the company was to blame, and they suspected gunman Cruz Vega. Vega and his family had originally sided with the Hispanic settlers in the area, and his uncle, Francisco Grigo, was one of the leaders among his people during the conflict. They would soon change sides when Grigo and his family were facing charges for killing three cavalrymen in an altercation after a card game. They were also suspected of killing another soldier on June 1st. Robert Clay Allison, a notorious gunslinger, formed a mob and hunted down Vega. They captured him, tortured him, and hanged him by a pole. Upon hearing the news, Francisco Grigo swore to avenge him. On November 1st, 1875, Grigo managed to track down Robert Clay Allison at the St. James Hotel. As he drew his pistol, Allison drew his pistol faster and shot Grigo twice in the chest, killing him. Allison would be charged with murder, but would later have the charges dropped as the shooting was ruled as self-defense. Company gang members retaliated by conducting nighttime raids on the settlers, destroying their property and murdering anyone who fought back. The Attorney General of the New Mexico Territory was eventually forced to step in due to lawlessness in Cimarron and the inability of local authorities to keep the peace. He requested federal troops from Fort Union to help the sheriff restore order in the town. But the federal troops never arrived, and tension only grew. Eventually the military had to intervene to stop the killings. The settlers were not happy with the arrival of the military, and this only caused an increase in violence between the factions. Buffalo soldiers of the 9th U.S. Cavalry were among the units sent, and on one occasion they had a shootout with a group of Texas cowboys inside the St. James Hotel. Three soldiers died in the shootout, and a few months later, Davy Crockett, who was involved with the shooting, was killed by local sheriffs. Not that Davy Crockett, but a younger relative to the more famous Davy Crockett, who died in 1836 at the Alamo. The conflict between the leaders of each party eventually dwindled down. Clay Allison was arrested in late 1876, and he eventually left the county in December of that year. The English owners of the Maxwell Land Grant Company foreclosed on the land in 1879, and the company was purchased by new owners from the Netherlands in 1885. The Colfax County Courthouse was the site of one of the last gun battles of the war. A group led by George Curry was assaulted by some sheriff's deputies on the courthouse lawn. Curry's brother and one of his followers were gunned down in the fight. Curry pleaded guilty to illegally carrying a firearm and was hit with a massive $5 fine. In total, it's estimated that around 200 people were killed in the Colfax County War. The war left its mark on Cimarron forever, including hundreds of bullet holes that still mark the walls and ceilings of the St. James Hotel to this day. The hotel was built in 1872 by Henry Lambert and was initially named Lambert's Inn. Locals claim that he was the personal chef to President Abraham Lincoln upon the recommendation of Ulysses S. Grant, but there doesn't seem to be any record of this. The building witnessed at least 26 murders during and after the war. Jesse James, Buffalo Bill Cody, and Clay Allison were some of the many outlaws that spent time in the saloon. The hotel was built during the lawless times of Cimarron, and the hotel quickly gained a reputation as an extremely violent place. The question locals would ask each other in the morning was, who was killed at Lambert's last night? And whenever there was a murder, the common expression was, it appears Lambert had himself another man for breakfast. Cowboys, traders, miners, and Santa Fe Trail travelers frequented the hotel and saloon. Despite its violent reputation, it was still considered one of the most elegant hotels west of the Mississippi. Wyatt Earp, his brother, and their wives spent three nights at the St. James Hotel on their way to Tombstone, Arizona. 
Jesse James stayed there several times, always in room 14, using his alias R.H. Howard. Even his nemesis and would-be quote-unquote killer, Bob Ford, stayed at the hotel. Buffalo Bill Cody, who briefly worked for Maxwell, met Annie Oakley at the St. James. When Henry Lambert's son Fred was born, Buffalo Bill, who was his godfather, nicknamed him Cyclone Dick because he was born during a raging snowstorm. Other notable figures who have stayed at the hotel include Doc Holliday, Billy the Kid, Pat Garrett, author Zane Gray, Blackjack Tom Ketchum, and Bat Masterson. Business in the area began to dwindle when the railroads were built and the Santa Fe Trail died. The once glamorous hotel soon fell into disrepair. Henry Lambert died in 1913, and for periods of time, the hotel would sit abandoned. It passed from owner to owner until 1985, when it was restored to its former glory. Today, the hotel remains open, and stepping into the St. James is like taking a step into a time machine, bringing you back to the gunslinging days of the Wild West. Renovations to the roof of the saloon uncovered over 400 bullet holes in the ceiling above the bar. It was double layered with heavy wood to prevent anyone staying in the hotel rooms above from being shot from below. A plaque commemorating Clay Allison and the 19 men he was said to have killed hangs in the hallway, as well as photographs of many of the famous guests who have stayed at the historic hotel. There is also the original headstone of Franklin J. Tolby, the minister of Cimarron, who was killed during the Colfax County War. The hotel's dining room, which used to be the old saloon, still has the original antique bar, as well as 22 bullet holes in the pressed tin ceiling. With all of the shootouts and death at the hotel, which has seen the murders of at least 26 people, it's no wonder why it has gained the reputation of being a hotspot of paranormal activity. The hotel has been featured on multiple ghost hunting shows, as well as Unsolved Mysteries. The second floor of the St. James is said to be the most haunted part of the building. Cold spots and the smell of cigar smoke is prevalent, even when it has been confirmed that nobody is smoking in the area. In fact, smoking is strictly prohibited inside the St. James. According to the hotel manager, you can always feel that the entities are present, even if you can't see them. One of the former owners reportedly saw the reflection of a full-bodied apparition of a cowboy standing behind her by the front bar. As she turned around, nobody was there. In room 17 of the St. James, there have been several sightings of the ghost of Mary Elizabeth, Henry's second wife. It's been said that she remains at the hotel as its protector. Mary was one of the many people who died inside the hotel, and her rose-scented perfume can still be sensed as visitors enter room 17. Guests report hearing tapping during the night on the windows and around the room. These tappings increase if guests leave the window open, almost as if Mary is reminding them to shut the window. Her ghost has also been seen and described as a milky white transparent spirit gliding silently down the second floor hallway. Another ghost that haunts the hotel has been described as a dwarf-like man, nicknamed Little Imp by the hotel staff. This spirit is a bit of a prankster who is constantly pulling mischievous tricks on the staff. He is often blamed for objects that mysteriously disappear, only to unexplainably reappear in different locations around the hotel. But some of his tricks are a bit more alarming. On one occasion, he was blamed for sticking a knife in the floor between the two owners at the time. Potential poltergeist activity has also been reported at the hotel, with items flying off of shelves and walls. Electronic equipment at the front desk has been known to behave unpredictably, and some workers chalk this up to something paranormal. Lights turn off and on on their own, and cameras are constantly malfunctioning with batteries draining. According to Cody Muntz, who worked summers at the hotel, on one occasion, he heard a blood-curdling scream coming from the far corner of the lobby back in 2002. He frantically searched around to see if anyone needed help, but everything seemed normal. Three guests were mingling on the opposite side of the room, but they seemed unfazed. They clearly did not hear what Cody heard, and for him, this made the whole situation even more terrifying. Multiple psychics have visited the hotel and have pinpointed at least three resident ghosts, as well as several others that seem to pass through from time to time. Thomas James Wright won the rights to the hotel in a poker game. He made his way up to room 18, where he was shot in the back. He attempted to crawl into the room as he bled out. Hotel staff claim that an ill-tempered ghost haunts this room and does not like company. One former owner claims that she was thrown to the ground while in the room and saw an angry orange light floating in the upper corner. 
Today, this room is padlocked and off limits to guests. The question is, does it remain locked to keep curious visitors out or to keep an evil spirit in? I'm Jesse Wilkins, and this is Hometown Ghost Stories, the St. James Hotel, Cimarron, New Mexico. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome into Hometown Ghost Stories, episode number 96. We are talking about Cimarron, New Mexico. I think that's how you say it. I pronounced it every which way that you can imagine while, uh, while recording this episode, but I wasn't going to go back and fix them all. So here we are. Cimarron, mm. Cimarron, Cimarron. That's the place that we're covering. The St. James Hotel is the focus, and I'm Jesse Wilkins, joined by Rob Coakley. Hello, Rob. Do you think when the military came in to try to cure some of this lawlessness they told everyone to simmer on down <laughs> not bad and we're also joined by uh by uh cyclone dick dave that's what we call him here oh, why what what, <laughs> what? Wait, did, did you miss that part of the episode <laughs> that was the nickname <laughs> that was the nickname that he gave to uh to the uh, uh buffalo bill buffalo bill cody gave that nickname to um his godson we can just stick with whiskey dave <laughs> that works just fine i think <laughs> <laughs> I I thought it was gonna be good. I mean, it's better than giving you the the other nickname, which was Little Imp, right? And so, <laughs> oh, take sight. Uh, yeah, and prefers. There's no right way to, to to approach that nickname, so we're gonna completely scrap it. I was gonna say I prefer Cyclone Dick. Not gonna say that. <laughs> I'll take Cyclone Dick. Not gonna say that either. <laughs> not gonna say either of those things. So, <laughs> anyways, welcome in everybody. Welcome in, and we're uh, heading back to New Mexico. So well, last time we were here. We talked about Albuquerque, and now we're talking about Cimarron. This is true. Yeah, Albuquerque was fun. That was an interesting. There's a lot of hauntings in the state of New Mexico. Because when I was looking, I was originally back when I covered Albuquerque. I was looking at Santa Fe. I was looking at Albuquerque. I was looking at uh, Cimarron also. And there's just every town out there is super haunted. So it's fun to be back. Yeah, yeah, we're even going to hit a couple extra towns tonight during this discussion portion because, like you said, almost every town's haunted here. Some of them are a little bit smaller, so we're going to take some of the neighboring towns tonight and tell their ghost stories because we wouldn't be able to get a full episode out of them. Exactly. So Cimarron itself is is very small, and from what I was looking into and in, during the research on the episode, it looks like there isn't really much going on in this town at all besides this hotel so there's not much of a draw i mean it's still a place that i would absolutely love to to visit especially to, to go to this hotel which is uh it's it's got a long list of of uh hauntings and tw 26 is a lot of and this is straight up murders to happen inside the hotel so i believe they have documented and confirmed like 17 of them but it's just kind of known that the number is is around 26 so, and you have all the uh, bullet holes still in the ceiling. It's very cool to see those things. We've, we've covered a few locations that still have either bullet holes or cannonballs still lodged in the wall or holes from cannon shots and everything. And whenever you can see history like that, that's, that's so cool just to still see that. And the detail yeah. about them doing the roof, you know, like kind of fixing up the roof or whatever. And they just find... It was either 400 bullet holes, which sounds like a lot. That sounds like the the structural integrity of that building would be jeopardized at that many. But uh, I heard other reports that it was 400 shell casings, which is still evidence of guns being shot. So either way, it's still a lot. But there's definitely still those those bullet holes. And there's still in the dining room area. So the dining room of the St. James used to be the saloon. And they still have the original bar there and above the bar that's where you can still see the bullet holes that are in like the uh, pressed tin roof so i absolutely cool. love that detail it's just because when we cover 
bullet holes in structures and other buildings in the past. I think Gettysburg was one that comes to mind. It's bullet, it was bullet holes from a gunfight, a, a big gunfight in Gettysburg that went <laughs> through the wall. But the bullet holes here are in the ceiling. And that just goes to show how absolutely wild the saloon gun. <laughs> it's crazy. And the reason I mentioned the feeling. Colfax County War so much was, for one, it was in the area. But for two, a lot of the assassinations and murders that happened in and around the Colfax County War happened at this hotel. Like they would show up and assassinate people at this hotel. So a few of the deaths came directly from that war. And that's why it was kind of important to mention it. Also, all the key characters were were lumped into this thing when you had Maxwell with the land grant and him selling the land grant is basically what kicked off this war. So about 200 people died in the war. Roughly 26 people had died in that hotel. And you have so many hauntings. I only mentioned a few of them. So we're going to touch on a bunch more, um, you know, during this this portion, but it's it's pretty wild. So Captain McSlug, yeah. go ahead, you can read it. Yeah, Captain McSlug says the guns were likely black powder in that time period. So I believe the number uh, is bullet holes, not casing, since they weren't common yet. I pulled that comment because he's wrong. This is the late 1800s, early 1900s. These are revolvers, repeaters, that kind of gun. Mm. So thanks anyway. I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule out the black <laughs> rifle possibility, but um, so it. it but why just, would they be? I'm just stuck they... on Dave saying that the you know that little gunfight. The Battle of Gettysburg. My point wasn't the magnitude of Gettysburg. It was the trajectory of the bullets. In a gunfight, they're going horizontal, whereas in a drunken bar situation, they're going up at the ceiling. So Mc, McSlugs wants to clarify. I said, thought it was 1870. That was around when the hotel was built. So um, the shootings took place during the war, which would have been years later pull up the years for us but I, that we don't have to get into a bullet discussion but I, I guess i would i would wonder why would the shell casings be in the roof i, I can understand the ceiling right 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 but not i mean when I, I guess i mean but the shell well, the casings they had that, on the they, floor and you shoot them well the, they reinforced that dining room ceiling so that people who are in the rooms upstairs wouldn't get shot through the floor so that they said when they renovated the place that they stripped out there was like two or three different layers of plot Two or three different layers of plywood. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, when when you when you shoot your gun, your your the bullet casing falls on the floor next to you. It doesn't go with the bullet. So it, it, I find that weird. Um, maybe they built it with bullets. <laughs> maybe they built it with bullets. Yeah, that, that's a possibility. So I, I maybe they stored them up there. Maybe they were shooting up there. But I found it interesting that they had to basically reinforce that ceiling. They had like two layers of heavy wood, and it was for the purpose of. It, I wonder if it's. It's probably not all shootouts. It's probably also just rowdy cowboys firing their guns into the air at a saloon, which is wildly irresponsible when you're at a hotel with people sleeping upstairs. But I guess you're not really looking for um, responsibility with this stuff. So this this place was known for being absolutely wild, absolutely violent. But at the same time, it was still one of the most elegant hotels west of the Mississippi, which is a wild combination to have. It's, you know, you have this place that's known for violence known for murder known for assassinations they had like the saying around town which was you know like what did um what did lambert or which, which man did lambert have for breakfast today basically saying that someone someone died last night again at the bar it, but but then when you contrast that with it's also the most elegant hotel it's it's such a weird combination to have but the place was beautiful on the inside and it still is to this day so they did a great uh, Bub Squash is elegantly violent. Exactly. So it, it's, it looks really good. So I think in like the 80s or early 90s, they dumped a bunch of money into it and completely just fixed this place up. It had kind of fallen into disrepair over the years. And over a period of time, it was it was definitely falling apart. But they, they fixed it up and it looks really cool. And I, I think they added on like a new section where you have some modern looking hotel rooms that have their own bathrooms and everything like that. But if you want to stay in like the Jesse James room or the Zane gray room or any of these other rooms that they have, the, the hotels, they don't have TVs. They don't have refrigerators. Um, they do have heat. I doubt they have AC, but it's very, I doubt they have AC and New Mexico. 
Yeah, and on this floor, that's what it looks like. So I was doing the walk, unless they have some sort of central air system that they they put in there. Yeah, but they must that would be, because that it's be New a, Mexico. It's the South, bro. Everybody has AC in the South, right? But uh, I was just going off one thing where this guy said he's he, he had put it in there, and I used some of his video. We credited him in the comments below. Go check out his video; it's pretty cool. But he had said that there's no heat or AC, and then he corrected himself. Actually, he said actually there is heat, but he never never went back and, and said whether or not there was AC. But anyways, um, the, the let's, hotel let's was, call this place right now. Let's get to the bottom of this. <laughs> we need to know let's if you get AC. the front desk on the phone. Do these rooms have air conditioning? That's the riveting part of the show that everybody wants to hear. Absolutely. So, but it's very much if, if you, cause you can book um, certain, certain rooms. You can't book room 18, which we talked about at the end, but you can, you're not going to call them. <laughs> Thanks for getting us banned from the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I get it on myself? <laughs> okay, well, there we go. We've debunked it. So no AC, as I suspected, <laughs> in the older portion, but in the other portion, you do. Um, all right, so there you go. There, there's, this is the stuff we bring you. We bring you live <laughs> updates. We're, we're going to get to the bottom of it one way or another. So that was, uh, I was so uncomfortable during that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to bounce back from that. But speaking of people not thinking it's haunted, I got I was reading through some of the comments on some of the YouTube videos today, and one guy is like, "It's not haunted." I went there. I stayed in the uh, I stayed in room seventeen, and then I played poker at three a.m. and it's not haunted. It's like that's it. That was the <laughs> you figured out if it was haunted. Like you yeah. might want to put in a little more effort. And then someone else called him out in the comments. They're like, "They don't allow you to play poker past ten p.m." So I'm like, hmm. Okay. All right. But Debunked. according to him, it's not haunted, but you do have, you have a wide range of hauntings here in this, uh, in this location. So you have, I mean, we can start with, I guess we don't start with room 18, but you start with room 17 and um, this is, uh, I'm sorry. Did you want to read that comment? Oh, sure. Uh, I was just, uh, Andrew said uh, I was extra uncomfortable because I just called her asking the same thing. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we okay, got to coordinate better. <clears throat> yep. Uh, chat, please don't call this hotel. <laughs> 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 Apparently called them twice already. It's very awkward. <laughs> so you get all sorts of things in, in this hotel. We'll start with room 17. So with, with room 17, this one is supposed to be haunted by Lambert's, uh, I believe it was his first wife who died inside the hotel. And she seems to be a friendlier spirit. She's been spotted a few times, but the most common haunting with her, there's two of them. One of them is they they smell her perfume, which is supposed to be a rose scented perfume. Every single investigation that I've seen on this, they mention this. Every interview with staff that work at the hotel, they've said that they've said that they experienced it. So it seems it seems like it's a very, very common haunt or paranormal experience is they they smell her perfume the other thing that they get is a very interesting one and this one is they get this tapping and the tapping seems to be focused around the windows Ooh. so if you leave the windows open it seems to start tapping to they think it's maybe to remind you to close the window mm. um there's also been tamping tapping i believe on the on like the the lamp but the window seems to be the most common one and it has led some people and some psychics to think that she may have lost a child that fell out the window, and that's why they think that you should close it, which I don't think there's any documentation on that, but that's one theory. And then the other theory is that she's just like, she's kind of looked at as like the protector of the hotel, where she's kind of keeping an, keeping an eye on things, and one of those things would be close the window. So that's, uh, that's her haunting. It's, it seems like it's a relatively friendly ghost or friendly spirit, and nobody really has had that I know of any sort of negative reactions with this one. There's also been sightings of it. They say that she'll appear at the foot of your bed and she'll be sitting on the bed. But for people that have seen this ghost, they seem to not have any, they don't seem to be like too terrified of this ghost. It doesn't seem like she's out there to cause any harm. And then there's also been sightings of her in the hallway. And I did play the video. I don't know if you guys caught it. It was quick, but I played a video that was from a ghost investigator, uh, paranormal investigation team and they had caught what looked like a full-bodied apparition kind of peeking around a corner and then going back now that team believes that this was the ghost of tj Wright, which I, I think that was his name sorry i don't have it in front of me but it, it was the ghost of tj who 
apparently died getting he got shot in the back he had won the hotel in a poker game we'll talk about that haunting in a bit because that's kind of the evil spirit of there but to me the description from what i looked at was it looked like that might have been her ghost because for one it wasn't in room 18 it seemed to be in the hallway for two it kind of matched the description that other people have given of that ghost which would have been like kind of the milky white appearance and it seemed to be roaming the halls so that's kind of where I was at on that. Mm. Did you catch that footage when it played? I, I don't know we were uh, pretty busy in chat. I, I'm just like kind of more taken aback by the tapping on the windows and stuff still, because that seems specific and something that we don't encounter as much. So mm. that that's kind of intriguing to me. So I'm a little stuck on that for now. Sorry. It is interesting. It is interesting. Um yeah, the, the tapping is is unique. So it's creepy and it's uh yeah, it's interesting that it's because when I hear that, I feel like that sounds creepy and with like negative connotations, but it's it does seem like that they say that's a positive haunting or uh or like a helpful mm. spirit possibly reminding you that the window's open. But I don't know, I just feel like tapping on the window is has like an insidious feel to it. Yeah, kind of like a let me in type thing, mm. but I mean, I, I'm just going off kind of the witness testimony with that one, which is everyone kind of feels that Mary's ghost is a relatively positive one, and she's kind of the keeper of the hotel. That's that's what they do. But well, but with we that know foot, it's it, not condensation from the AC dripping and hitting the window. We've we've confirmed that situation. We yeah. got to the bottom of that. Yes, we did. But um, maybe that's why she she did sound like she didn't want to have this conversation again when you called her. <laughs> That's because <laughs> yeah. Andrew had literally just called her and had the same conversation. <laughs> All right. That's yeah, tapping on the page. window. Very creepy. Very creepy. Yeah, indeed. So, but it's my theory just from watching that footage that I think that that video of the ghost that they caught on camera, which is very good, very good footage if it's legitimate, that's that strikes me more as that might be Mary's ghost instead of um instead of TJ's ghost there, gotcha. which would be in roommate team. It was uh yeah. Uh, yeah, TJ Wright. I did get the name right. So, is TJ Wright's ghost confined to room eighteen? Is it? Does it seem like that spirit stays there and doesn't leave there? From what I've read, yes. And basically, after this ghost allegedly attacked one of the hotel owners, that's when they they locked up the room and decided that this room is off limits. And mm -hmm. judging by the judging by the very uncomfortable phone call that you just had, it is still <laughs> off limits. It certainly mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Um, yeah, then you have a uh, you have the little we have the little imp or a little dwarf ghost likes to cause mischief. This one I heard about in a few interviews, and one of I, I mean I don't know if he's a former employee or former owner, but he was an older gentleman, an older gentleman, and he had a story about it. And he said he saw this little guy, and the guy was just grinning at him from across the uh, dining room, and then he up and vanished. But this this thing has shown up and it's played pranks and the most alarming prank that it pulled where most of the time this is confusing uh most of the time the hey here's our new camera view while we're throwing everybody off <laughs> most of the time it seems like it's a playful spirit who's just kind of doing things that you know like tiny little pranks it'll he'll take objects and put it in a different section of the hotel he will um you know, make things disappear, but then they'll reappear. So people, it's not like stealing things, but it's, it's, it's playing jokes on people. And I can't do it with this camera angle, guys. I'm so uncomfortable. It's not going to happen. We're it's going the back. Worst. We're going it back. The it's worst. the worst thing I've ever done on this show. <laughs> it, we, we tried something. It's over now. We're done. We're moving on. Anyways, the most alarming, <laughs> the most alarming prank. Oh, shit. Focus up. Focus up. We're going, we're, we're diving back in. We're committed. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> the most alarming joke that this thing pulled was, I guess two of these owners were talking to each other and mm. a knife just flew down and stuck in the floor right between them. And to which this is when they were like, we don't really like your games anymore. This is kind of, uh, this is kind of concerning for all of us. It seemed like a, that seems like a direct threat. I mean, that's inches away from going directly into your foot. This is no longer a joke. This sounds like it could be something could be something not so fun and prankster-ish. It sounds like it could be something evil if it's throwing knives around the room. Escalating, right? We've, we've seen this with a bunch of stuff like this where it starts as stuff that feels like innocent 
but the escalation happens over some time. And that time frame is sometimes 48 hours, sometimes multiple years. So definitely could be something like that. I agree. Now, I don't know if, so I, I don't have a time frame on when that incident happened, but it sounded like, you know, these are pranks. They're uh, just little things going missing. And then it seemed to escalate to that point. But I don't know if anything else has happened where it's gotten worse. I also don't know how recently that knife incident happened. So you'd think if it was escalating, then more things would have happened here and it would have been something more to be concerned about. We've also had people getting pushed here, people getting poked in the back, um, people's shirts getting tugged and all sorts of different things. So they're, 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 this could be attributed to that ghost, the little imp, but we don't know. So it's kind of concerning. But um, I'm on strike until we fix the uh, until we fix the view here. <laughs> so take it away, guys. Do, do do they have any clue as to the origin? They just don't. It just is random. As far as I know, I, they don't. So they, they've they've seemed to have pinpointed like three resonant ghosts, but there's a whole bunch here. So you mm -hmm. you have Mary, you have TJ, you have the little imp, and then there's according to the psychics that have been there and the mediums, they, they say that, you know, there's other ones that do go in and out, but there seems to be three there that are there all the time. And I'm assuming that those are the three. Interesting. Yeah. And then in room 18, we, we talked about it briefly, but this is, this is kind of the, this is like the, the evil entity inside the hotel. They think that this thing is bad. They've gone so far as to lock up the hotel room. It's literally padlocked. So you, cannot get in there does seem to be like a space above the door mm -hmm. where you can look in they do have like these these kind of window situations above the door that you pop in i think it's to create airflow throughout the hotel but it seems like it's been there since the beginning but it's like these little doors right above your hotel door that you can open up if you want to get some air in the room because Not they refuse to use ac <laughs> <laughs> that's right as we have whereas we have confirmed but the uh so I have heard of people like pulling up a chair just to get a peek inside and it still has like old furnishings, but it's basically got like a box spring and a cabinet and that that's about it for that hotel room. But when it was active, one of the owners had gone in there and she had gotten pushed and then she saw what she described as an angry orange ball of light. I actually have her actual comment here. So let me pull that up real quick. I wonder what the um, characteristics of a ball of light have to be for somebody to determine it's angry. Like like vibrating. Yeah, that's that's like I, I don't really know how you <laughs> how you do that. All right. So Captain McSlug with 499 in super chat. He said, Is it what is it money you want? Fix it. All right. All right. Five dollars will go back. All right, fine. Thank you for the donation, Captain McSlugs. You are a legend. Uh so here's the actual account uh from the woman that this happened to. So she says, um, I am the one who saw the ball of fire, the orb that was orangish red in TJ's room as I poked my camera through the hole. Oh, wait, no, no, this is someone different, but apparently they saw the same thing. So this is not the former owner, but it says, uh, I am the one who saw the, the ball of fire orb that was orangish red in TJ's room as I poked my camera through the hole. And later when we went to the dining room, my rings, which, um, had a hard time coming off of my fingers, just flew off of my hand and landed in the dining room somewhere. We searched and when we came back to the table, they were in my plate. Uh, her chandelier was swinging back and forth. This was before the refurbishing of the building back in 2005. And it sounded as though heavy desks were being dragged along the hall floor next to where we slept. When we did go to the poker room, they still have the original Ouija board we played that and so many things happened that night i would have to write an actual chapter but just to name a few uh there was a party going on after we exited the poker room and i thought they were having a reenactment people were dressed up in fluffy dresses men had on top hats and as we passed uh as we passed why okay that's probably passed by that's probably what they meant to say as we passed by they asked if we wanted to play we were on our way to the bathroom and i just said no it's late and when I came out of the, then the comment stops there. But so an interesting array of, of haunted experiences there. Um, I did listen to an interview from, from the owner and basically she had said like she had gotten 
pushed to the ground and then she saw an angry orange ball of light and it sounds like this person also saw it it also sounds like they got a camera so I'm, I'm wondering if they they have footage of it as well but that's interesting and then the that whole opening story that i read that was mm -hmm. not one that i i didn't just create that one out of thin air that was actually a legitimate story from um a guy named tom jenkins who submitted the story to legendsofamerica.com back in 2005 but that was his his true account of it so that one was three full-bodied apparitions that was the one where basically i explained at the beginning he walked down the hall and or he entered the hallway so before of him actually because he he stepped out in the hall because he heard people talking playing poker so he stepped out in the hall he saw a woman in a red period uh dress this red victorian dress and she was holding a drink tray and she he said she looked like she was annoyed and he's like oh this is my chance to finally play poker in that poker room so he went and he like threw on pants to which i would ask why did you walk outside with no pants on in the first place but apparently he did maybe that's why she looked annoyed she's like wow i gotta deal with these guys. these ghosts are playing poker and this guy's <laughs> just walking out here with no pants on maybe i'm upset anyways <laughs> but she so she goes down the hall I'm, just, I'm sorry so he gets dressed goes down the hallway um and these guys there's three cowboys sitting at the table and they're dressed you know in old old time cowboy clothes and he's basically like you know what's uh what's the buy and they're like you know 20 dollar ante but i guess he only had 20 dollars on him to which people would think well you have enough buddy go play poker but he was saying you know for those of you who don't play poker that'll get you in the game but then you don't have money to play with so yeah but um, but two things here first I'm just glad it wasn't Cyclone Dick Dave that walked out without his pants on. <laughs> for start, just helicoptering down the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're all excited that's who wasn't the one without pants on. Secondly, you're like excited you're going to go play poker and you only have twenty dollars on you. What did you yeah. think you were? What? Where did you think you were? You're like, what are we doing here? He said he also Come had on. a company credit card, but uh, I don't know if they've. Should we call and yeah. see if they have an ATM? <laughs> <laughs> Is no, nobody <laughs> listen chat. Nobody call them and ask them if they have an ATM. Do not do it. Andrew, don't do it. <laughs> so uh I guess if you want to play poker with the ghosts, then then bring more than twenty dollars. But he um the, he did go on, but that was kind of where the, the story had reached his crescendo. So I I I decided to stop saying it there. But he said, unfortunately, all I had was my twenty dollar bill and the company credit card. Having declined, I went back to my room and fell asleep. Um, then he says, when I got up around 5.30 a.m., I actually read that part of the story. So I will go down to this. Um, he says, I don't know what I experienced, but I wish I had stayed a little bit longer to talk to them more. Like so many other experiences that we have on a daily basis, I berated myself later for not asking the men their names. What would have happened if I had asked them to leave? Would they have simply disappeared? Of course, I wouldn't have asked them to leave. I truly thought they were real people when I saw them. As I write this, the hair on my arms is standing up. It's a funny thing. I remember so much of that encounter as if it had just happened yesterday. On the other hand, there are so many details that have totally escaped me. I compare my experience to a change... Oh, sorry, a chance meeting of someone that you respect and look up to and not recognizing them only to find out later who they were. There are so many things I wish I could have said and done if I only had. I don't do drugs and I don't drink. Nothing quite like this has ever happened to me before, except when I was seven. But that's another story. So that's interesting. It, it, it's Wow, what a cliffhanger. Just not going to tell us what happened to him when he's seven? I know. Yeah. I mean, he submitted the story in 2005, so maybe he has submitted what happened to him when he was seven afterwards, but that's, yeah, what a blown opportunity, right? Because if they, he thought they were real people. He thought they were just people who dress up like cowboys and were playing poker. Yeah. So he thought, damn, I don't have enough money to play this poker game. I'm just going to go to bed. Then the next day he goes down to the desk and he's like, you know, any big winners last night? She's like, nobody was there. And this isn't the first ghost story that I've read from here that was like, I was the only one staying here. It sounds like it's not a very busy place. Again, it's a very small town. This is kind of the only thing in town from what I understand. And it seems like it's it's not usually a very busy place. So if you are in the area, you want to check it out. It sounds like you could probably get that. You could you could almost definitely book a room. It's definitely not yeah. going to have AC. We know but you for could, that for sure. Probably doesn't have an ATM. So prepare yourselves, folks. Prepare yourselves. But it sounds like you a lot of the people had like the whole old wild west area to themselves and he did as well but it reminds me of um the cable guy do you remember that movie like if they do have an atm where like if you went there and and were like wait you don't have any air conditioning they'd be like well 
we're period specific and we don't they didn't have ac back then and be like they didn't have ac they didn't have ac but they had atms what are we doing here (laughs) It's a great movie. I actually just rewatched that one. I forgot how like unsettling that movie is. Like, it's, oh, it's, 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 it's 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 a comedy, but it's also like it's, it's yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't classify it as horror, but it's definitely uh yeah. definitely a wild ride that movie. When it's a fun it's one. Great. I love when he does that karaoke of that Jefferson Airplane song. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so one. why was he so good? At that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here's some other accounts from people that have uh, stayed at the haunted hotel. This one says, "I stayed in the Bat Masterson room on the first floor with my wife and teenage son. It was December 1994. The bedroom had an adjoining wall to the Jesse James room, which was unoccupied that night. While sleeping, I felt a noose tightening around my throat, oh. a voice saying I can't breathe, and random laughter coming from the hallway. I would not spend another night there if you paid me, and I don't even believe in ghosts. My imagination doesn't matter to me. I was freaked out." Why don't you believe in ghosts if you experience those things? <laughs> I know. What do we, why is this what they always say? They always try to like qualify it at the end. Not everybody, but like there's people like, I don't believe in ghosts, but or I saw a ghost. It tried to hang me with a rope. They were laughing about it, but I don't believe in ghosts. Like, what do you think happened? What are we doing here? <laughs> if you were to say like, I didn't believe in ghosts before. Yeah. You just sound like a, you sound like a crazy person. Like, <laughs> I don't believe wolves bite. I got bit by a wolf. <laughs> I still don't believe they bite. Yeah. You sound like a crazy person, but I guess to some, you sound like a crazy person if you say you do believe in ghosts. Um, here's another one. It says, I got hired at the St. James at the beginning of April as a housekeeper, and I shit you not, my third time there, Mary slammed the door on me and TJ blew cigar smoke at me. These guys didn't even give me a little tappy rap warning. They went straight for the door slamming. Also, Brief. I don't believe in ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> also, doors aren't real. <laughs> uh, another one uh, it says, I stayed there early October 2017 and lots happened. I'm going back later this month with friends. I heard cowboy boots walking down the halls with knocks and more. One woman with long hair had her hair lifted straight up in the middle of the uh, into the air while she was in the bathroom doing her makeup. So basically she's doing makeup and her hair just got picked up. Oh, wow which I think I've seen in a horror movie before, but that is pretty terrifying. This whole cowboy boots thing or this hearing footsteps, obviously we talk about footsteps all the time, mark it off your bingo cards, but this is super, super common in this hotel where they hear the sound of cowboy boots. And sometimes they even hear the spurs on the cowboy boots walking down the hallway. And one of the guys that was being interviewed who worked there, he said, like, every time I heard that, I would run and open the door because I, I wanted to I just wanted to see something. I wanted to see a ghost or I wanted to see a person, but he never saw anything. He would always hear it. And he would uh, he would just make it a point to check the hallway every single time. So it's um, but yeah, those are some those are some testimony from people that have experienced hauntings there. I would love to go there. It always give me all the wild west saloons that's it give rob all the brothels <laughs> give me the wild west saloon sometimes you get a nice little combination of both in one place uh there give was dave a story all the demons <laughs> give dave all the yeah give dave all the demons the, all the demons in apartment buildings yeah. and, yes um, we'll, we'll we'll be at the saloon drinking whiskey but there was another story i didn't add it into the opening because it is not confirmed but there's there is another story where this place may have actually slipped into brothel territory and there was some uh shocking some sex workers that were you working there going stay in, in your own lane i'm just, sorry rob just, i'm sorry i just you didn't sound stay in your you didn't own sound lane. fully ready to to buy a ticket to new mexico with me so i gotta sell you on this all right uh <laughs> all but there was a, a, there was there was an unconfirmed story of a um a sex worker who was killed in what they call the red room, which I would assume is a room that perhaps has red on the walls. Um, but that is, a, that is a story. There isn't a ton to it. They were unable to, as far as I know, it hasn't been confirmed there. Uh, this is not one of the 26 deaths or the 17 confirmed deaths, if you will, but there is a story about that. And there is a story about her ghost haunting that room. So not a lot to it, but that is one that has been talked about. So gotcha. could have could have been secretly a brothel. I think it sounds more like it never acted as a brothel, and maybe sex workers made their way into the hotel at some point, slipped past you know the desk or were 
discreet enough about it. So. I mean, if this was back in a time where New Mexico was basically lawless and people were shooting holes in the ceiling and stuff, I don't think that sex work would be out of the question <laughs> at a saloon. <laughs> She's got. To, she has to survive her way through the lobby. Yeah. <laughs> She's clear. clear there's like there. whoa, whoa, murder. We're perfectly fine with, but sex work, absolutely not. <laughs> they got to draw the line somewhere. Yeah. So exactly. no, it's a good one. Should we dive into some of the surrounding towns real quick? Um, Let's do it. So looking because this was the only haunted location in Cimarron. Cim Cimarron. Cim Cimarron. 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 It's just it's just cinnamon. All right. Cinnamon. <laughs> so I actually looked at some of the towns surrounding, and I know Dave did as well. And I found a haunting in Raton or Ratton. Who knows? One of those two. Cinematon. Cinematon. Cinema Raton. Ratonaman. Ratonaman. That's the one. Sorry, we are the worst. So this is in <laughs> Raton, <laughs> New Mexico. It's the it's the Schuler Theater. So Dr. J.J. Schuler, a surgeon for the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad, served as the first medical doctor in Raton, New Mexico. He also served as mayor from 1899 to 1902 and 1910 to 1919. And as president of the New Mexico Municipal League from 1911 to 1915, um, as mayor, it said that he like really developed the town, which makes sense because of the time frame then. And when... When he was alive towards the end of his life, they actually dedicated this theater to him and named it after him, the theater in town. And when he died, they put a plaque in there for him. It says, whereas the erection and completion of this municipal auditorium, which has been a source of such delight to the inhabitants of the city, is a monument to the forethought, idealism, zeal, and energy of the late mayor, J.J. Schuler, under whose leadership the purpose of the people was accomplished. Now, therefore, in recognition of such services, be it resolved that said municipal auditorium be hereafter known and designated on the records of the city as the Schuler Auditorium. So basically after he died, they named this after him because of all the stuff that he did for them. But since then, it is said to be haunted and it's haunted by him, supposedly. Various signs of the haunting include a strange scraping sound on the theater, which is like the terrifying one, mm -hmm. a dressing room with significant cold spots, and a broken mirror that almost never works, which I, what does that mean? <laughs> Fix the mirror. Get yeah, a not broken um, one. What yeah. kind of a mirror only works sometimes? <laughs> yeah, gotta, just, it makes no sense. Yeah. Either clean it or it's way too broken. And it says the majority Shut it of off and turn it back on. <laughs> you can't blame the ghost for, for that. All right, call him and let's we see have what's a, going on. <laughs> <laughs> we have a refrigerator that is forever broken. It yeah, it's got to be the ghost. <laughs> nah, dude, you need a new fridge. The majority of folks who have seen a performance here have reported seeing or hearing some type of paranormal weirdness. This is the only haunting in Raton, so I wanted to throw this in. It's about a 30-minute drive from Cinema Run and uh, a town that we probably would never cover on its own, but I feel like it was a good enough haunting to throw in and discuss at the end here. That is interesting, and actually, we, we joked about the mirror, but if the mirror doesn't work, that is yeah. absolutely alarming. That means you're not seeing your reflection. That means you're a vampire. Yeah. 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 So maybe that's one that doesn't work. C Cinematon is full of vampires. So <laughs> yeah. that's, that is very concerning. That theater yeah. will turn you into a vampire. That is a, uh, hmm. That's actually, a, that's, that's a good haunting. The scraping in the walls. I have a very hard time not chalking that up to rodents, but I would like to a hear scraping it. scraping sound going across the stage? Yeah, you got rats, bro. Uh, what What? What are rats dragging that are scraping? Themselves. You got to experience rats in the city. <laughs> Once you experience you rats scrape. in the city, you'll understand. Well, you, you think, think a rat pulling sound. a plow? Like, what are we doing there? They're fingernails, bro. That's They're not claws. A scraping. That's that's a different noise. Scratching. scratching. Yes. Maybe scratching. Yeah. If it's a scraping, if it's like some, something being like dragged, then. Yeah. That's more concerning. I, I would have to hear the hear the sound. Mm. Dave, Steph says yeah. now now she needs to go because she wants to be a vampire. <laughs> like, <laughs> make sure you call first. Call first. Make sure that 
you can confirm that you will be turned into a vampire. You don't want to just go all the way out there without it. So thank you guys for that. Yes. yes. Don't call the St. James Hotel, though. Do not do it. Do not pick up your phone. Please do not dial 578. (laughs) Stop it. Stop it. You want to go there. They're going to see this episode. There isn't that many videos on YouTube about this place. (laughs) We are banned. We have been banned. Yeah. All right, Dave, why don't you hit us with the other place? So according to Southwestern Ghosts and Hauntings dot blogspot dot com, In Thurman, New Mexico, around 1888, a saloon called El Monte was built. Supposedly, it was constructed out of stolen railroad ties. The El Monte was a busy place during the 20s and 30s, serving as an illegal gambling establishment for those stopping over on the way to the racetrack in Raton. It was during Therma's heyday that a couple who were just married decided to spend their honeymoon in Therma and stayed at the El Monte. One day during their visit, the groom left his bride at the lodge to go hunting. He never returned. The bride, with no one to support her, became destitute and was forced to work at the saloon to survive. She stayed there in Therma at the saloon for the remainder of her life and then some, perhaps in the hopes that one day her husband would return. The hotel stands today and you can even see the railroad ties in one of the rooms in the old part of the hotel. However, A lot of things have changed since then, including the name of the town and the name of the hotel. The hotel slash restaurant is now the Laguna Vista Saloon, which was enlarged, and the town is now known as Eagle Nest. One thing has not changed, however. The destitute bride is still there. There have been reports by various saloon employees of encounters with a woman dressed in early 1900s dance hall attire seen passing through the saloon area. The ghostly woman would disappear in an area of the saloon that used to lead to upstairs. It is now blocked off and the stairway is hidden. This phantom has become known as the ghost of Goonie. Goonie is now the saloon's nickname. It seems that the ghost enjoys playing the piano in the evenings as well. Piano music can be heard playing in the dining area, only there is nobody there when it's investigated. What? You're muted. It's a good story. Thanks. We get a lot of these, like like the destitute, uh, like the brides who are left to fend for themselves and ends up turning into a haunting. Mm. It's not a common one, right? It is. Yeah, we we hear we hear that a lot. The brides left and they're just so distraught. I mean, it is a distressing situation to you there have your husband disappear and never return. Obviously, like Rob just did, except he returned. <laughs> or uh, we always return. hear about how the the bride who gets stood up and then left there. So uh, it, could, it could definitely le- le- definitely lead to a destitute situation. Yeah, which is kind of like the La Llorona story as well, the origin. And this is also kind of in that territory, isn't it? Um, I don't know if this is, would be considered a, a banshee, so to speak. It's just the apparition of a woman. No, I mean, uh, I was just saying that, that this general area is in the general vicinity of La Llorona hauntings. Yeah, what that's one of the origin stories. For sure. But uh, other strange activities take place at the Laguna Vista, such as various poltergeist encounters. Employees have found that the ghost taste in music is not the same as theirs. Whatever that means. I bet they're gonna tell me right now. Stations on the radios get randomly changed or turned off. A radio with no batteries was plugged was unplugged once and it continued to play on its own. And the kitchen pots and pans have been known to randomly fall off the walls as well as other objects in the building. Once, a little girl claimed to her mother that a lady was telling her to be quiet. When the girl led her mother to where the lady was, nobody was there. However, the little girl pointed to an empty corner and exclaimed, the lady is right there. Another situation of kids seeing stuff. I saw a a super creepy video, very similar to that, where this little kid was saying hi to their grandfather who had recently died just in a room, just saying hi. It was super creepy. Reminds me of that. But yeah, we, we got that a lot. Kids... I believe kids and pets see things that adults can't and that's Mm -hmm. concerning. Yep. Uh, We have a question in chat asking how far the towns are from each other. And they're, they're like basically neighboring towns, but they're all like 30 minutes away, which is kind of common in the Southwest. Definitely common throughout Arizona. Like you just to get from another, from a town to another town, it's like a 30 minute drive. Yes. In general. So yeah, so close. Sure. I mean, th- those are 
Great Hauntings, creepy. The mm. second one, I, the second, the one that you covered there, Dave, that, that one I find a little more unsettling than the first place. But the, but these these are like that's kind of it for the hauntings there. So they're they're they would tough to do be tough to do a whole episode on those spots, which is why we wanted to kind of mention it in this episode. Yes, absolutely. Cool. Anything else in this area that you guys want to touch on? No, that was it. No, uh, shout out to Catherine McSlugs, by the way. Dollar ninety nine in super chat said make it stop to get us out of the new camera view, but we did, we did. Thank you again for the donations. Uh, yeah, so um, we'll hop into some reviews and jump into Patreon in a bit, but I do want to remind you guys, as we do all the time, that uh, it is spooky season. October is coming, October twentieth, Plymouth, Massachusetts. It's coming up, and I'm looking forward to it. We are a month and a day away. It's going to be a lot of fun. So we're having our episode one hundred party and we'll gathering it's gonna be a lot of fun so if you can make it out there the details are on facebook go to facebook.com slash hometown ghost stories you can join the event page and look it up and um and uh we'll see you guys there so whoever can actually make it out there it's gonna be fantastic it's gonna be a great time we'll probably do a little walk around haunted plymouth as well maybe some kind of unofficial ghost tour we'll see how the night how the night goes uh amanda welcome in i'm so glad that uh that you joined in a live broadcast. Anybody else that was new to the live stream, thank you guys for joining. This was a big episode, and we do thank you guys so much because this one, I think, hit the most amount of likes that we've ever had on the video. And it also yeah, we did make a viewers. promise. We made a promise for sixty likes. So as long as that has nothing to do with Cyclone Dicks, I will fulfill this promise. <laughs> uh, Matthew um, Thomas dropping two dollars in super chat says Cyclone Dick Dave is here to stay. <laughs> Hashtag CDD. <laughs> We, yes, we promised a lobster dance. We didn't Dave, promise if, if a lobster we dance. got to <laughs> if we got to sixty likes. I am way better. Here. It's way better than his cyclone dick dance. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want to do that one instead, Dave. <laughs> but um, you have to do the lobster dance for the people. I did. I am not your. Dave. I'm not your clown. <laughs> <laughs> you said you would tell That's a joke what? after the after the stream, right? I hope you got one together. Yeah, I still do that. I, I'll I'll do what we promised. You promised uh, when the when the stream's done. You do what you but promised. You need to do, I will. Yeah, I will I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do what you promised. I don't care what you say. <laughs> Imagine, wow! I, I can't believe how much you hate our fans. Like I, I just can't believe how much you hate our listeners. So, well, I'll after, start reading some reviews after, after I read this list of patrons. You'll start to understand why we hate our fans. No, we love you guys. We love every, every single one of you, including the ones that have customized really long names on Patreon. Let's jump into it. Buckle up, people! Another hour of Patreon list names. Here we go: Allison V, Dakota G, Donnie N, Jeannie R, Jennifer P, Lisa J, Michael Bliet, Blake, Mom and Pops W, Nick, Robert H, Demon King, and Inspires Gaming are our VIPs. Thank you guys so much. We have for the Warrens, Wards, Ambie Rose, Anna C, Kath Q, Chris Connolly, LBPS Founder, Next HTGS Guest. We have Cody G, DC, Lily, Jake V. We have Janice G, Mar Fire, Matthew T, Papa Squatch, Rachel B, Sarah Cook, Steph A of the Church of the Stephanies, Stitch Kitten, Sydney B, the other Rachel B. We have Adam S, Al Capone, Al Capone's allegedly poorly clothed folding bed, folding bed. We have Al Capone's allegedly poorly taxidermied wife, Alicia Espinoza, Anthony, how long can I make this anyway? T, <laughs> Ashley M, Brandon W, Brennan, AKA Major Archibald, but Kathy McSlugs, Colby0204 believes Adolf Peterson was a patsy. Crystal, we have Crystal Quinn. Huska Castle. Huska! We have Huggy Huska. Bear Joe R. Uh, Kelly Costa. Welcome in, Kelly. Uh, I believe you're actually not brand new, but you know, a little special welcome. Curly J, Michaela T, Mina H, Mariah M. We have our second page. Nuthouse Queen, Paul from St. Louis, Pork, Sam from Nepal, Sarah R, Solar Flare, Soph, Hooper, Tall Dave. <laughs> 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 I, I typed that out earlier and i forgot about it we, have tall dave. <laughs> we finally have tall dave we've been waiting all this time we have the big spag nasty <laughs> tiffany h and xenu is my homeboy thank you guys so much for being on patreon three dollars a month will get you ad free episodes all sorts of other stuff Go follow my friend Inspires on Twitch. He is a uh, positive streamer and a great guy and a VIP member here on Hometown Ghost Story. So thank you guys so much. Um, reviews? Yeah, let's knock out some reviews. So this first one is from Jillian's Island, titled Completely Obsessed. 
I'm totally brand new to podcast, and this one has completely sucked me. Oh shit! You froze at a yeah. bad time. I started friend. listening to various podcasts. <laughs> you froze at a bad time. <laughs> Am I back? You're not. Kind Am of. I back? You're not. Let's just wait till next week to read those. But so the good news is, Rob actually went to Dave's house, bullied the Comcast people into fixing in his internet. Um, but the but the bad news is, they went to Rob's house and gave them, <laughs> gave Rob Dave's internet. So that's what we got. But. <laughs> Anyways, I think that'll pretty much do it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we will catch you next week for another episode of Hometown Ghost Stories. We'll see you. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching another episode of Hometown Ghost Stories. If you like this video, be sure to hit like, hit subscribe, and turn on that notification bell so you can see exactly when we go live. Spoiler, it'll be every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I know what you're thinking. We're all thinking it. Where have all of our reviews gone? Well, we've moved all of our horror movie reviews, as well as other reviews, over to a brand new YouTube channel. It is brand new, it is small, it is thirsty. For new subscribers so if you like horror movies if you like horror video games horror tv series even horror books swing on over to htgs reviews and drop a subscribe on our brand new pathetically small and starving new channel hey it needs you and we need you thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next week for a brand new episode